Hey everybody, this is DLL Cool J from Arch Cloud Labs. And today we're going to take a look at Ghidra's patch diffing functionality so that way we can actually take a look at a, another binary to see what the changes are in specific code regions. So, with that being said, give you a little bit more background of uh, the binaries that we have here. So, these are two binaries from just a simple CTF uh, challenge where effectively it's like, hey, what's the difference? What's the vulnerability, right? And what we're going to do is in program two, which is the quote unquote patched uh, vulnerability, and here we have it kind of highlighted here, or excuse me, this is the patched program. We're going to go ahead and bring up the original program, the unpatched one that's supposed to have some kind of vulnerability to see if we can identify what that vulnerability is. So here, if we look at the symbol trees, it's a very small um, uh, application. We have main, and if we look down in main, we can see that we just have one function call to my funk, and then we return zero if everything's successful and close out the program. And my funk is right above here. Pretty simple program. If we go ahead and take a quick look at it, we go ahead and load into EDI a string it says enter username. We're going to go ahead and print that out to the user. Looks like we call f gets reading from standard in, and then this is going to get stored into what appears to be an array. And then we also have a size constraint for f gets. Don't forget, f gets takes three arguments the thing, uh, the buffer that you're going to store data in. So in this case, it looks like it's going to be a char array. The number of elements that you're looking to store, so preferably the size of said char array. And then uh, where you're reading it from, right? What stream? In this case, it's going to be standard in. So going from there, uh, if everything goes well, we just print, we effectively just print this back out to the end user. And I can go ahead and slide this over to make this look a little bit easier here, uh, or look a little bit more readable here. And then we can just put, uh, we can go ahead and edit this function signature. Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to rename loc to make things a little bit easier to read. There we go, rename variable. I don't know why I didn't let me do it up there, that's fine. Just call it buffer, so we get a buffer, right? We read it in of nine elements, even though this is 10 elements. And we can print off the username or whatever we're gonna store into said buffer. Cool, sounds good there. So let's go ahead and take this and then diff the original binary and see if we can identify what the differences is and what, what may be an issue that's uh, underlying in, the, in these functions. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead <clears throat> and click this little button up here. Here we see open diff view. The default hotkeys for this are control alt uh, C and then that'll automatically pop it up for you to fill out your settings. But I'm just gonna go ahead and click this. And what you aren't seeing, because I don't have it displayed on my screen right now, but you're, there is a, another prompt that will come up that will say, hey, what, uh, what program do you want to diff it with? And I'm gonna go ahead and quickly add that to our view here there we go so we can now see this so i'm going to go ahead and select program one because i'm going to diff program one against program two click ok and then there'll be a handful of settings that you can select from do differences on and once again i'm going to go ahead and make this visible boom 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 so by default, you can say, hey, show me the different bytes, references, bookmarks, properties, labels, code units, comments, fun functions, etc. And you can choose um, none of them, all of them, some of them. It, it really depends on, on what you want to do the differences on. Uh, for right now, we're just going to keep them all on. Um, but uh, a good example of like, well, I just want to so show the different bookmarks. So imagine uh, you and I are working on a CTF problem, and then you went ahead and, you know, added some bookmarks or some areas of, of code you thought were interesting, I'd be like, all right, well, let me take your, we're working on the same challenge binary, you just have more comments in, into your piece, let me go ahead and, and see if there's any uh, uh, differences that, uh, you know, I haven't labeled, or, or what bookmarks you've labeled that are interesting that I should, I should take a look at. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So we're just gonna click OK here. Now, one thing that is, and I have to keep sharing these windows, Memory differs. Cool. So this lovely warning uh, pops up for us, and it is super critical that we take a look here. It says, the memory addresses defined by two programs are not the same. 
So when we go ahead and we look at these differences, they are looking at memory addresses of showing like, okay, well, where what's different in these regions, right? So if you have something that is, um, uh, say, the same function, but uh, there's different memory addresses, it's going to be a little bit hard to kind of scroll and show those diff views. But we're, we have some tricks and tips to make it easier, and I'll show you what that means in, in practice here. So... Again, uh, if we go ahead and take a look here on the left, we have program two, and on the right, we have program one. And we've already covered that it's a pretty simple program. There's you know a, a main function and then a function called myfunk that we're interested in. So I'm gonna jump right to myfunk. And I'm going to move this to the right for now because we're just focusing on how we actually do the diffing and not so much of what the underlying code is doing for the moment. So, as we see here at myfunk, we are looking that right now we are over here at address 401136. See that we are not in the same here, and as I scroll up here, it scrolls up over there, making this kind of a nightmare to do the diff, the diffing, right? It's kind of a pain. So what we can do is we're gonna go ahead, make this a little bit bigger, and show like, okay, so here is myfunk for program two. I'm gonna click this camera button up top here, and what that's gonna do is create what Ghidra refers to as a snapshot, or, or basically just a, a snippet of, uh, of the function that we're looking at, and keep it open in this pane. So with that being said, I know I want to go see what's going on in address uh, 41336, or really just the top of the myfunk function and seeing uh, what's going on with the differences. So here in program one, right, so allegedly the, the vulnerable program, the program trying to figure out what's going on here, we see uh, the differences, or where the differences begin in this code, are, are highlighted in orange. So as we look here, and kind of go from the top down, we see, okay, enter username, blah, 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 we're gonna print that out to the user, and then we start seeing things change. And one of the changes that we can easily point out is that we have over here in, in uh, program two, right, we have that call to fgets. And then over here, we have, whoop, excuse me, we have a call to just gets. So if you're, uh, if it, just to, to re-familiarize yourself, gets will just continuously take in uh, user input and then throw it into a buffer, right? There's no bounds checking, whereas in f gets, there is explicit bounds checking that you can implement as parameters. So looking back into this piece, it looks like this is a, a key difference into these programs, and then the rest is just, okay, we, we effectively print out the same, you know, your username is whatever you take in from standard in. So with that being said, and we, we've looked at this, I can hop on over to program one, which I've already loaded into the code browser, and notice that this snapshot that we took stays with us as we move views, right? So I can go ahead and close this now, and I can make this a little bit bigger, and I can see in our program one, so our vulnerable program, in the myfunk function, we're taking in, uh, we're, we're, we're calling in gets, and we're just gonna throw in a bunch of data into this uh, char array, which is only uh, an array of uh, length 10. So if I put in a bunch of A's, we will for sure, or you know, whatever input, we will for sure crash this program, classic buffer overflow kind of situation. So with that, I just wanted to show a super quick example of how you can leverage uh, Ghidra's lovely uh, diff viewing uh, uh, functionality. But then also, if uh, you, know, you want to go deeper and understand some of the more advanced functionalities of it, you can leverage Ghidra's documentation. So to do that, you go to Help, and then you go to Contents. And what's going to pop up as I change my screen to make this actually show. One second. Boop. So now we have the Ghidra uh, help piece here. And if I type in diff, we can see kind of a similar example of what I just showed is uh, uh, demonstrated with a couple executables. One thing you're going to notice when they do the, the diffing between um, these these uh, programs is that uh, the addresses line up really nice and easily um, in the same spaces, uh, or the same functionality rather, so they can step through it and do the diffs a little bit easier. But in cases where you have memory addresses that are different, and the functionality and like, you know, you're having that weird offset issue, you can leverage the screenshot tool uh, to help you kind of scroll and analyze what's going on. There's probably other ways that make things a little bit uh, easier uh, to go. And then also uh, note for if you're like, well, why are things orange? Why are things green? Or any questions like that, or like whatever the default settings are, the Ghidra manual is an excellent resource to dive into. 
So you can see here that it says notice that the differences highlighted are light orange above, and then what you've like actually clicked on are selected in green. So if you're like, what do you mean by selected in green or, or clicked on? So if you're leveraging the decompilation view where you click on one of the functions, that should get highlighted in the code assembly view, and then that would also get picked up in the, uh, the patch diffing piece as well. So with that, I just threw a bunch at you. Hopefully it was helpful for your next CTF adventure. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, spread the word. Thank you.